Hey everyone, welcome to Band on a Budget. With in-ear monitors becoming increasingly popular, we're reviewing the Xtuga RW2080, which highlights a two-channel in-ear monitor system, so you can have two separate monitor mixes, and it also comes with four wireless receiver body packs. I bought this on Amazon for around 480 New Zealand dollars. Now compare that to one of my all-time favorite in-ear monitor systems, the Sennheiser EW IEM G4, which only has a single channel transmitter and one body pack receiver and costs a whopping 1,849 New Zealand dollars. If you've used one before, you'll know why they cost so much. They sound absolutely amazing, crystal clear sound, and they are so reliable. If I had the money, I would definitely be buying the Sennheiser in-ear monitor system. But, if you don't have that kind of money lying around, or maybe you're looking to explore wireless monitoring, you might want to check out Xtuga, as it comes with enough body packs for you and several other band members. Now, some of the benefits of using a in-ear monitor is that rather than using a stage monitor speaker, you're using earphones, which makes everything sound so much cleaner. You're protecting your ears a lot more and there is less noise on stage, which reduces the potential feedback and makes mixing easier for your sound engineer. You just have to make sure you communicate clearly to your sound engineer what exactly you want to hear in your earphones. I purchased this in-ear monitor system about a year ago and I don't have the original packaging, but in the video you can see pretty much everything you get with the Xtuga RW2080 minus a few items which I've swapped out or put aside just for simplicity. You'll see a white sticker on the unit which is just a reminder for me which I'll talk about a bit later, but basically in the box you'll find the main radio transmitter which comes with two separate channels, channel 1 and channel 2. You'll also find four body pack receivers, all of which can be assigned to either channel, or split them up into groups and have maybe two receivers assigned to channel 1 and the other two receivers assigned to channel 2. Xtuga also gives you four sets of earphones. I only have two of them here just for the video, but I'll talk about them shortly. You'll also find an AC power adapter, but this one however is not the original as it was not compatible in New Zealand. Annoyingly, I had to also make sure that this adapter was a center positive connector, while all my other gear uses a center negative. Kind of annoying. The transmitter housing is an all metal construction and rack mountable. It comes with two removable antennas, one for each channel, and it doesn't matter which order or which side of the channel you attach them to. The white stickers on the receivers are just little reminders of the correct channel and frequency in case someone accidentally tampers with the settings and changes it. Taking a close look at the receiver, it's mostly an all metal construction with a plastic faceplate cover. I'm not sure if there are other higher frequency bands available, but the one that I have purchased has the right frequency that I can legally use for my job. The receiver itself feels pretty solid with a good weight to it, and the metal chassis makes it feel rugged and reliable. The only part that I think would be easily breakable would be the front plate or face cover, which is just plastic. The front cover opens up and you can see the receivers take two AA batteries. When you close the cover, it clicks into place pretty well, and it doesn't seem like it would accidentally open on its own, unless you press on the two sides and pull it open. On the top, you've got the antenna, the headphone output, which will work with pretty much any standard 3.5mm jack connector, and the volume knob, which also acts as the on-off switch. On the back, there's a metal clip to attach to your belt or pockets, However, the clips can unhinge itself sometimes if you add too much force to it. Luckily, they are easily reattachable as long as you haven't bent the metal clip. When you turn on the receiver, the front screen illuminates with an ugly orange glow, and then the orange light will switch off automatically after a few seconds. Pressing the up and down arrow buttons on the front will not change your settings at all, so don't worry about accidentally changing settings while you're performing. You can only do this by opening up the front cover and pressing the small button labelled set. From here you can then use the up and down arrow buttons to cycle through one of the four banks and ten channels. Once assigned you can then press the escape button and you're good to go. Just make sure your receiver settings match the settings on your transmitter. 
So as I mentioned before, the Xtuga RW2080 comes with four sets of earphones like the ones you see in the video, as well as two extra pairs of ear tip sizes and separate packaging for each set of earphones. Now, the earphones feel very cheap and sound very average. They have little to no external sound isolation, but they will work fine for someone who doesn't care at all about sound and maybe someone who has a particularly quiet band rehearsal. I'm not sure, I, I wouldn't recommend using these earphones. The cable is very thin, cheap and easily breakable. I personally think the provided earphones aren't necessary, but it is a nice gesture from Xtuga, so thank you guys. The two provided antennas just screw into the back of the transmitter for channels 1 and 2. Each channel has its own power button, which you just press once to power up. To turn off each channel, you need to hold down the power button for a few seconds, which is a nice feature to avoid someone accidentally powering off a channel. On the front, there's a headphone output for each channel with their own volume control, which you can send the same signal that your in-ear monitors are receiving to another source like a drummer or keyboardist or basically anyone in a stationary position. To change the settings, press the setting knob and one of the bank selections will start flashing. You can then turn the dial left or right to cycle through the banks. Alternatively, pressing the set button will start the same feature starting with choosing one of the four banks. Pressing the set button again will switch to the channel selection which will start flashing. Again, just use the setting knob turning left or right to cycle through and choose one of the 10 channels. Pressing the knob inwards to save your settings and you're good to go. Just make sure your transmitter frequency is the same on your receivers. The front screen also displays the radio frequency output bar going to your receivers, which you can lower using the knobs on the back of the transmitter. There is also another bar below that that indicates the audio signal coming into the transmitter, which you can adjust the volume from the source of the audio signal. So you want to make sure that the input signal is not peaking. On the back you'll see an XLR and jack combo stereo inputs, both for channel 1 and 2, as well as the radio frequency output volume knobs that I mentioned before. The transmitter requires a center positive connector which is why I have this white sticker on the top to remind me and anyone else that is using it because most of the gear we use is center negative. I had to purchase a separate power adapter because the one supplied is not compatible here in New Zealand. Now even though the back of the unit indicates a right and left input, it's important to know that the Xtuga RW2080 is absolutely not stereo can't make that any more clear, it is not true stereo. It allows two separate input signals, like a stereo mix, but then it feeds into a mono signal to your in-ear monitor receivers. Even if you pan the input signals hard left and hard right, you're still only going to get a mono mix in your earphones. I'm really annoyed about this because Xtuga kind of misleads you into thinking it's true stereo, when in fact it is not, and far from it. So let's talk about the sound. There is some hissing noise generated from the receivers once your earphones are in, but once the music starts playing, you probably won't hear it anyway. I certainly don't. Other than the hissing, the sound quality of the audio going from the transmitter to the in-ear monitor receivers is actually quite good for a cheap in-ear monitor system. I've been using a range of KZ earphones and they work fine for me. I still would have loved a stereo mix from the receivers into my earphones. It would have provided a better soundscape with more balance and presence on stage. It can sometimes be a bit disorientating with a mono mix in your ears. Now to overcome this, you can set up a microphone on stage to capture the ambient noise and stage presence and just have that fed into your in-ear monitors. In terms of range and distance, I was able to walk around my house and outside down the driveway and still hear an audio signal before it started to drop out. Range probably maxed out at about 50 meters. I did however experience short dropouts at a performance even though the stage area was only about 10 meters across. I discovered it was because I walked across the opposite side of the stage and in front of the drum hardware which was just all metal and several speakers and amps. This caused radio interference and I experienced a dropout of signal just for a second or two. As long as your stage performance area isn't too big and you maintain a clear line of sight with the transmitter antennas, you're generally safe. Mind you, this is a cheap in-ear monitor system so you get what you pay for. 
So far, it does the job, and when I hear a dropout and signal, I just walk a little bit closer to the transmitter and keep the body pack on the outside of my pockets or attach it to my guitar strap near my shoulders. Overall, the x Tuga RW2080 is a very affordable all-in-one in-ear monitor system for anyone on a budget or someone who wants to dip their feet in the wireless in-ear monitor swimming pool. It already comes with earphones, but I definitely would recommend getting a set of your own upgraded earphones for a better experience. The RW2080 does come with some drawbacks, with the faint hissing, some signal reliability, and the stereo signal gimmick, but you get what you pay for, remember? Even though the signal dropouts happen from time to time, it's always because I walked too far away from the transmitter, or I walked in front of a whole bunch of metal objects like drum hardware, and cymbals, and stuff like that. With that said, the issue is also easily avoidable. Just stay relatively close or maintain a clear line of sight with the transmitter. And as for the hissing and the mono mix signal, well, I don't even hear the hissing anymore when I perform. I also just make sure to have my soundie capture the sound stage and ambience with a separate microphone and feed a little bit of that into my earphone mix. And lastly, if you are going to invest in a in-ear monitor system, particularly one that is battery powered, I recommend you also invest in buying rechargeable batteries. It'll save you a lot of money down the track. So I hope this was helpful and thanks for tuning in guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.